Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is the uh, Getting to Blinky video series, part four, Associating Components. This is really the step between schematic and layout. And uh, let's pick right up where we left off last time. Uh, let's see, we'll close this thing. So this is right where we left off last time. We're at finished schematic, and we're ready to move from this over to a layout. And this is really where it's you know, a critical thing because we need to associate a schematic, which is a a visual uh, kind of high-level representation of what's connected to what. And then we actually need to take this and create a printed circuit board that will actually physically connect, uh, for example, uh, pin 2 here, trigger, to the top of C1 and the bottom of R1, right? And that'll actually be a physical connection and also connect to pin six, right? And so what we also need to do is associate these uh, representations of resistors or capacitors or 555 timers to actual components. And <clears throat> that needs to be, usually they're standard components, um, in the case of most of these component, most of these parts here. So the way we do this is we go to, to uh, CVPCB and launch it right from here. Uh, this is the error warning for a new file. And what we're going to do is we're, we've uh, pulled in. It actually pulled in the net list that we generated in the previous part three videos. So if you don't understand that, please go check that out. Uh, and then what we're going to do is actually select components where we can hook it together with with uh, so we so this is the component in the schematic so BT1 is battery and that's the name of it or the value rather uh, C1 and then the value is, is one microfarad uh, D1 and then LED and what we're gonna do here is basically pick footprints that are associated with each of these so uh, I've decided for this component for this project we're gonna actually do all uh, well, not all, mostly surface mount, um, because we'd like to be able to, you know, uh, easily manufacture this, and then also we want to make it a learning experience, because a lot of people have experience with through-hole, but this is a great way to learn about surface mount. To not make it too difficult, though, what we're going to do is use really large through-hole component, or surface mount components, rather. So for capacitors, uh, we're going to grab, so you see we select capacitors and then it actually filters down some of the available options here. If it's battery, it actually gives you all the options because it doesn't quite know what that is. But for capacitors, it knows exactly what it is. So it's going to give you a couple different options here, uh, all the way up to uh, 1820, 2512, uh, which is kind of like the tantalum sized. What we're going to do is we're going to pick a 1206 component double click it and it actually associates it there. Now we're going to do this same thing for many of these components here. The LED, we're going to choose LED-1206 and that's slightly different because it's going to have a notation for the, where the anode and cathode should be. For the resistor, we're going to choose a 1206 SM for surface mount 1206. Come on, there we go. R2, we're going to choose the 1206 7555. This is actually going to be a surface mount component. In this case, we're going to look quickly at the data sheet for this. Um, we're going to look at, you know, there's a couple of people, different people that make, or vendors rather, that make a 7555. We're going to look at the Maxim. So let's look at some of the available packages here. So that we see that we have a, uh, what is that one? So this is the can. This is a dual. This looks like an, uh, a, through hole dip, um, but let's actually see what we have available here. If we go down to the bottom of the data sheet, you should be able to see all the different packages available. Ah, uh, yes, there we go. So we have a for the duals, we have a, a 14 pin dip, we have an SO4, SOIC 14, we have a SIR dip, which I'm not sure what that is, and then an 8 lead SIR dip. Then we also have a 8 lead plastic dip. Oh, sir, huh, sir, is ceramic, ceramic dip. We also have a 8-lead small outline SOIC8, and then a TO99 can. 
and those are some ones that showed at the top. Now we're going to choose the through hole version here, which in this case, or sorry, the surface mount version, which in this case is the SO or SOIC, and so it's going to be 8 pin SOIC, and that is available, at least for the maximum. So what we're going to do is we've got that selected there. Now we need to scroll down, we need to go find the SOIC. And many of these, these are all uh, default footprints that are available here. Get down to S. And you can see that SM1206 is available as well. We can really, for the ones it doesn't recognize, we can choose just about any component. Even though this is only a 2-pin component, we want an 8-pin component. And so we see here we have SO8, E and N. E is extra wide, I believe, and N is narrow. So we're going to double click on that. LDR is going to be the same size. Oh, sorry, that's a through hole component. So we're going to try and find one of those. Which in this case I'm actually not too sure about. We're going to uh, actually check. We're going to check this in once we get into the layout, but I'm pretty sure it's the R1, which is the pretty standard through hole. Well, so we'll be able to check that. And then finally, uh, the BT1 is battery one. We actually do not have one available for this yet. And that's actually going to be the subject of the next video where we actually create a part footprint. And we'll be able to check the R1 footprint. So that's all we have for now. Uh, we have been able to associate most of the components here. In the next video, we'll uh, actually start looking at the CR2032. That will be the battery holder for the CR2032. And then uh, we'll match that up, create the footprint, and then associate it back in here. Uh, just as a reminder, the this is uh, you know based on uh, contextual electronics, which is a 10-week course. So if you're interested in learning more about KiCad, there's an entire KiCad course. Or if you're learning, want interested more about design decisions, and you want to know, you know, not only how do you physically, you know make these connections in KiCad, but how do you make the decisions behind all this stuff? Then you should check out contextualelectronics.com. You can find all out all about uh, designing circuit boards. The first session is all about designing a, uh, a project that has a wide range of different applications. It's got temperature measurement, it's got power output, current output, that kind of thing. So um, <clears throat> definitely check that out, contextualelectronics.com, and thanks for watching.